Hi everyone, I wanted to use today's video to cover basic ways in which you can use Pandas to work with market data. And we'll be using Bitcoin's historical price as an example. My next videos will be about algorithmic trading using the Coinbase Pro API, but I thought that I should start from here first. So if you're interested in algorithmic trading, remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification icon to know when the next video is posted. Now let's get to the video. And so what I'm going to do, I already added some of the script. We're going to be working with this file. I got it from the Kaggle website. It's a website with many data sets on different things, which you should check it out. I'm going to put the link in the description so that you can get the same data set. Or if you want to try any data set that is not even related to trading or Bitcoin, there are many others in there. And this data set looks like this. So it's a CSV file with a column for timestamp. This is the number of seconds since 1970, January 1st until now, or until the moment that this record was created. The open, high, low, close value, the volume and the volume currency and the weighted price. This corresponds to the OHLC data that you usually see in trading, like those candle bars. Those are formed with these values. And this is minute data. Every row represents another bar in the graph. What we're going to do is read it with pandas and convert it into a data frame. Pandas reads from a CSV with the function read CSV. So we read the file and this is the output we get. The timestamp, these are all the columns that we included and pandas adds its own index column. We can remove that and I, ideally, in this case, I prefer to work with the timestamp as the index. Now to make it more useful to me, I'm going to convert the timestamp into a daytime value using the ISO format that comes year, hyphen, month, hyphen, day, space, and then any time that you need. Okay, so the first part that I'm going to do is drop the empty values. These are NAND values. And we are going to call the function drop NAND that will remove all of them from the data frame. And I'm updating the data frame here. If you see here, the original data frame that we read had over 4.7 million rows and eight columns. After we drop all the NAND values, we are left with three point, almost 3.5 million rows. So we discarded more than a million rows because they had empty values in them. And we end up with clean data, which is here. You can see all the values are there. So the next step is to convert this to a daytime value. That can be done with the function to daytime from pandas. It will take a data frame or a panda series. In this case, I'm passing in a series, the column timestamp. And if you haven't learned about pandas, this is how you address every column. You put the name of the column here. If you see, it's spelled the same way. That means I'm telling pandas to give me just that column from the data frame DF. And I'm telling it to convert those values to daytime. And I'm also saying that those values, the original ones, are in seconds. That represents the Unix time from 1970. So that way pandas knows how to convert them. And those new values are overriding the timestamp column. Now, this is what we are left with here. See, now the timestamp actually changed. We have the year, month, day, and time. So what I'm doing here is setting the index of the data frame to the column timestamp. This is the, the same column that I'm passing here. I'm doing this so that this timestamp column is the index and not this index that pandas created for us. Drop true just replaces the original index and doesn't include it back into the data frame. In place, it tells pandas to not return anything, but modify the object that is already there. That's why I'm not assigning a new, that's why I'm not doing this, because this function already is transforming DF in place. And if we look at DF again, we see that now timestamp, it's highlighted and you can see differently from the other rows. And the nice thing about pandas with daytime indexes is that you can slice them like a Python list. For example, here I decided to get the minute at 12 at noon of December 30th this year. I just created this variable so that I can easily slice the data frame like that. So I can do df and show, see? That is returning only 61 rows. We only have 61 bars within that hour, one bar per minute, but it's actually counting the, the first minute of the next hour, that's why you get one more. What I'm going to show now is how you can use pandas to compute different values like a moving average of the price by following this example. I want to compute the moving average of the closing prices. So I'm getting that column 
I'm applying the method rolling with window 25. What rolling does is basically that is the rolling, the moving window that you are using. If you say window 25, it means that it will be a moving window of 25 data points. In this case, the data is in minutes, so that will be 25 minutes. This is an abstraction to be able to, to apply functions rolling on the data. And then it already has a built-in method for computing the average. And we are assigning all that to a new column. In Pandas, it's very easy to create a new column in your data. So you just put your data frame the same way as if you were creating a, a new dictionary entry in a dictionary. You just put the name, whatever you want to call the new column and set it as the value that you want. So we are putting that, the moving average. And now what I want to do is plot the moving average against the close. From the start slice to end slice, that's just that one hour of December 30th that is defined here. And that's the result you can see. With pandas, you can easily plot with dot plot on your data frame. Under the hood, it's using matplotlib to do this. So it can plot the values. And you can pass many parameters to modify how the graph looks. So as you can see, this is the closing price as it's moving. And this is the moving average of 25. So it's just a way to smooth out the data and you can use it for your analysis, maybe check when the values cross or compute two different values of moving averages. Maybe what you want is to compute maybe a moving average of 50 days. Also of the close, not rolling. Fifty and dot mean. Now we are going to plot those three values. As you can see here, we have the MA fifty is the green line, it goes over here. MA twenty five is the orange line, over here, and the price is moving over here in blue. And that's the time. So this makes it makes working with data in pandas very useful for data science or for trading if you're trying to create an algorithmic trading tool to analyze your trades or possible market entries. You can create many methods for different technical indicators. I'm going to plot the data again because we have been adding values. As you can see, the new columns are added here, MA25 and MA50. And here I created, I wrote a few functions to show different technical indicators that you can do. These are Bollinger Bands, that is the bands that you can see when you see the price and two bands up and down on the average. So I will put a link in the description of describing what Bollinger Bands are, but essentially you need the moving average of your data plus a certain number of standard deviations away from it. From what I have seen many times, the number used is four or two. I use two in this function. That's why we are creating the upper, upper B band, which is the upper Bollinger Band. So it's calculated by the value of the moving average at that point plus the standard deviation times two. So we are just separating the, the band two standard deviations from the moving average in the up direction. Now the lower band will be the same except that you subtract so that it's underneath and we return the data frame. The next function is the exponential moving average. And you can compute it. I'm also computing using the close column with these functions from pandas. Now, how do I use this function? For example, in this function, I'm expecting an MA series. That's a moving average series. That's just the column of moving averages. It did it like this so that I can easily pass different values instead of expecting one particular by name here inside. And STD series, that should be the corresponding standard deviations for the same moving average window. We're gonna get a panda series that is the standard deviations over that period. However, I'm not saving that into the data frame. Now I'm passing my bbands uh, function expected data frame. So I'm passing the data frame. And for the second one, I'm just passing directly the column that I need for the moving average here. I named it differently before. That is the column, is this column that I'm using. All right. Well, as you can see here, we have the upper band added and the lower band added. Okay. We're gonna plot the close value with the upper band and the lower band. Here you can see upper band is the orange value and the lower band is the green value. So you can use it as you would use technical indicators with a broker or just analyzing the prices. 
You can even create uh, functions to detect pivotal changes in movement of price, momentum, supports and resistances. And all of those are very useful if you're creating a trading bot for yourself. Let's see now the exponential moving average. I wrote this function to return just the series instead of updating the data frame or creating a full data frame. So that's why here I have to assign it to a column if I want to keep that value. But essentially I call the function, pass the data frame that I want, the window that I want. So we start here, we have the values and I can plot it, you can see. That is the exponential moving average for a time frame of 25 data points. As you can see, Pandas allows us to easily work with financial data and create our own indicators with minimal effort. The next step is to get live market data and start automating the trading process. That will be the topic of the next videos. My plan is to also cover the stock market in the future as well. So subscribe to the channel for the next video about algorithmic trading with the Coinbase Pro API. I appreciate any comments or questions about the topics here, and I'll see you next time.